Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 41 in our legendary new and improved Arduino tutorial series. And so what I will need you to do today is I will need you to pour yourself a nice huge mug of ice cold coffee that is very very strong hot black coffee poured over ice the strong, strong, extra strong coffee begins to melt the ice, and then you end up with a refreshing, cool beverage. I also need you to have uh, our, an Arduino handy. Of course, we are using the eLego kit for all of these, the Super Starter kit for all of these lessons. If you don't have one, check out the description. There's a link. You can get one on Amazon for 35 bucks. And then you will have all the same hardware that I am using. What we are going to talk today about is we are going to talk about hexadecimal. And I'm going to give it to you step by step so you can understand what hexadecimal is and how it works. I will give you a clue. This lesson draws very heavily on one of our earlier lessons, which was binary numbers, okay? And we did the uh, we did the binary numbers very early on. That was, let's see, I'm going to check it just to make sure that I don't lie to you because I'm going to need you to go back and uh, check out that video to <clears throat> review that. And it was lesson number five, understanding and working with binary numbers. And so if you're not, <clears throat> if you're completely unfamiliar with binary numbers, you need to go back and watch lesson number five in this series. And then also in lesson number six, you actually made an LED binary counter. <clears throat> okay, let me just tell you kind of like, like uh, what I really hate about programming and what I hate about computer science and kind of like computer games computer experts, and that is they make things really, really complicated. And this is a really, really hard thing to learn, uh, this field, because it seems like it's hard to get a starting point that when you go to educational material or you go to a tutorial you go to learn, they already assume that you know everything. If I already knew that stuff, I wouldn't need you to help me. But when I look at the instruction material that's out there, so many times they're not trying to teach you. They're just trying to show off how smart they are. OK, so I come along kind of a nice grandpa like guy and I'm showing you how to really understand it. But the thing is, sooner or later, you're going to start running into some things that are really confusing and you see my nice little code and nice little examples that like turn the LED on, turn the LED off, and then all of a sudden when you go out in the real world you start getting hit with some really confusing things like you're trying to do something and you're hit with something like this. Okay, this is, uh, what is this? This is Arduino code. We see the serial dot begin 9600, <coughs> but then look at this. Uh, data array red 0 equals 0 x f f slash slash 1 1 1 1. No explanation of what this is. It's just black magic. Okay. So one of the things when you get past the nice grandpa guys like me that you're going to have to deal with is you're going to have to understand hexadecimal. And the good thing is it's really, really easy to understand if someone explains it. You're plenty smart to understand it. You just need someone to tell you the secret decoder ring to know what it means. And so we are going to help you. So when you run into all of this nonsense like this, you will begin to understand what it is. OK, <clears throat> and it really this is an important lesson. So I hope I don't sound like I'm r rambling on. But it, this really is a very, very important lesson. And it really all gets back to the very, very fundamentals of computers, okay? Computers are something that have only one thing, but they can do one thing very, very well, and they can do one thing over and over and over. And so all computers are comprised of tiny switches, on-off switches. That's kind of dumb. They're either on or they're off, and that's all they know. There's a switch that you can turn on and a switch you can turn off. And if you hook all those on-off switches together in a smart way, you end up with an iPhone or you end up with a microcontroller or you end up with a digital camera. Okay, but all these digital devices come down to 
a whole lot of on-off switches, maybe billions and billions on a chip, that are just connected together in a smart way. <clears throat> now, what you've got to do is you've got to take things like music and numbers and colors and books and intergalactic dust readings, and you've got to turn all of that universe of in information that you interact with and, and reality that you interact with, and you've got to turn it into something that can be represented with nothing but switches, on-off switches. Well, how would you do that? Well, you need numbers. Hmm. If we said an off switch was a zero and an on switch was a one, then we could have two numbers, a zero and a one. Well, that's not very useful, but then if I had two switches, if I had off, off, that would be zero, zero, that would be zero. If it was off, on, <clears throat> that would be zero, one, that would be a one. If I had one, zero, I could say, well, that's a two. And then, you know, on, on would be a one, one, that would be a three. So if I start stacking these on off switches together, I can then start getting bigger and bigger numbers. And since I can have, in effect, an infinite number of on off switches, <clears throat> I can represent any number by a series of zeros and ones. Well, what about colors? Well, I just take colors are broken up into, you can make any color by combining red, green, and blue. And so I can have a relative strength of red, which is a number, a relative strength of green, which is a number, a relative strength of blue, which is a number, and therefore I can change any color into a number, and then I can change any number into a series of zeros and ones, and therefore I can represent any color with a series of on-off switches. That's the whole thing behind digital computers. So the way digital computers started was they would just have like a row of on-off switches conceptually, and then down below it another row of on-off switches and another row of on-off switches. <coughs> And then if you wanted to put, like, let's say a number in a memory location, you would first of all have to have the locations, like the addresses of where you are, like which row you're on. You would have to have a, an address. I'm on row zero, row one, row two, row three, row four. Well, that's got to be a binary number. So that's got to, you're going to have a binary number zero, 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 zero. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, or 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so the address of the memory location is going to have to be a binary number. And then the contents of that group of switches, that group of binary uh, slots, is going to have a value. Now that could be a number that you're storing, or it could be a command that another set of switches would execute. So you could like store a number in the first row. You could store a second number in the next row. And then in the third row, you could put a command and that command could like tell the microprocessor, which is another group of switches, load the number at this memory location. And then the next command could be load a number at this location. And then the next command could be add those two, <coughs> those two numbers together. And then the next command could be put that number in this location. So all of a sudden, it's almost like your commands and your data are all intermixed together. So you're having to keep track of the addresses as well as the numbers. And guess what? Those commands that are in one of those rows, a command, it's a series of zeros and ones. And so the way that programming started was just this, this set of switches, this set of on-off switches where information could be stored as on or off as zeros or ones, and then the addresses, the numbers, and the commands were all simply sets of zeros and ones. And so the way you would program the computer would be something like put, uh, let's say that you had four bits to be easy. <clears throat> let's put the number 0010 in memory location 0000. And then let's put the number 0011 in memory location 0000. Zero, 01. And then let's have a command at memory location 0011, zero, uh, one, one, and that command is going to be load 
memory location 0000. zero, zero, zero. So you see all the commands, all the data, and all the addresses were zeros and ones. And in fact, you kind of had a keypad where you were just sitting there putting in zeros and ones. And then what happened is it just became untenable because as you started trying to work real problems, the human mind was just hardly even capable of being so careful to keep track of so many zeros and ones. And so you needed something a little bit easier. And that was it would be easier if we could kind of chunk some of those zeros and ones into in, into little baskets that were easier to deal with. And those little baskets were called hexadecimal. So let me kind of just show you if I can. I think we need to go back and, and we'll start with understanding binary. And I understand that we already did binary, but uh, let's just review it. <clears throat> and so we know that numbers can be represented any number can be represented by a series of zeros and ones. And the first example that we did, we had four bits or four switches, and now we're going to do eight because it's the same. And what we know is, <clears throat> is that each column has a certain value, that the first digit has a worth of one, the second a worth of two, the third four, eight, sixteen, 32, 64, and 128. Okay, so if I had a 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, that 1 would be worth what the 1 in this place would be worth 16. And we learned how to count, right? We started at 0, 0, 0. Uh, I started too far over, okay? I did one, two, three, four, five bits, but we just did four. Okay, if we add one to that, well, zero plus one is one, zero, zero, zero. Okay, if we add one to that, well, one plus one, uh-oh, we're out of digits. What do we do? One plus one is zero, carry the one, okay? Now, zero, 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 one, zero, what are we going to do? We're going to add 1. Well, that's easy. 0 plus 1 is 1. And then uh, this 1 comes down 0, 0, 0. Now this one you got to be careful on. If I add 1, 1 plus 1 is what? It's 0, carry a 1. <clears throat> and I have this 1, so it's going to be 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1 and then zero, zero. You see, it's sort of like your odometer rolling over. It's like you're at 99 because it's your last digit is a nine. Well, here your last digit is a one, so you roll over like this. And then we can go on. Let me just fill out the, the fours, uh, the four bits. So it's zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, one zero one zero one zero one 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 zero zero one one zero one 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 zero one 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 okay so that sort of does the four bits and so with four bits you can get to eight plus four plus two plus one which would be this number and that's 15 and so with four bits you can get six you can get 16 numbers which are the numbers 0 to 15 if that makes sense okay well then what you can do is when you do that you can just continue to add more bits and if you have eight bits as we do here if I had one 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 that would be 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 okay and that would be 255 so if I have 8 bits or 8 switches I can go to 255 all right <clears throat> so if we just understand how much each of these columns is worth then we can do a conversion pretty quickly so let's say that I have 1 0 0 1 0, 1, 0, 0. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, how much is this one worth? This is worth 1. And then how much is this worth? This is worth 8, okay, because it's in the 8 column. And then this is worth 32, okay? So this number, 
zero zero one zero one zero zero one would be thirty two plus eight which is forty this would be the number forty one okay so you can see that you can convert to and from binary to the world that you live in pretty easily okay but this is the problem like imagine if you wanted a number like a million that's just like a whole whole lot of zeros and ones and you're just gonna mess up so they wanted to chunk these things together and so let's take a number and again let's do uh, let's do eight bits and so I'm gonna say this is worth one this is worth two four eight sixteen thirty two 64 128 so I'm gonna have eight switches I'm gonna have eight bits and you understand how that corresponds to zeros and ones alright so <clears throat> this is what they said this is too hard so let's take the four, first four and chunk them together into one character. And then let's take the second four, or the more important four, and put them in one character. So what we need is we need one character that can contain all of these numbers. Well, from one to four, how big of a number can that hold? Well, uh, eight plus 4 is 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'm going to need to have one character that represents the numbers from 0 to 15. So let's see how we would do that. Well, and these, you know, just imagine these lining up with these over here. Well, I've got 0, 0, 0, 0. I've got 0, 0, 0, 0. Well, what character could represent that? 0. I've got 0, 0, 0, 1, what character could represent that? Well, that's a 1. Okay, this is pretty easy. I need a character that would re represent this. It would be a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5. Don't think this is decimal. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. This is going to throw you for a loop in a minute. 6, <clears throat> 7, 8, 9. Okay, I know what you're thinking is, is that, okay, 1010, zero, zero, that's 10. No, what's the problem? You've got to have just one character. It's one character that you're grouping these four bits, these four zeros and ones, these four series of zeros and ones into one character. What is your problem? You're out of characters. You're going to have to come up with another character. Well, I guess they could have used a triangle or a tree or an apple, but those might be hard to see. So something that we're familiar with, hey, let's use a letter. So the logical one would be A. And so A represents the binary number 1010. Zero, zero, okay? And that represents the decimal number 10. Okay? What is what is the next one going to be? Well, I guess we're going to go with B, and then we're going to go with C and then D and then E okay and then I've got one 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 that is F okay now it doesn't go any further because with F I've used up all those slots that's the biggest number one 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 is the biggest number that I can make it is the biggest number that I can make alright so how do you count in hexadecimal? It's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. And that way you can take any 4-bit binary number and you can represent it with one character. Okay, <coughs> well what would the next number be? Well the next number would be, uh, the next number after 1, 1, 1, 1 would be 1, zero 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 so you have to f plus one is zero carry the one and so this would be zero and then you would have a one over here and that would uh, be starting again then I would have one 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 two one three one four one five one six one seven one eight one nine one a one b one c one d one e one f 
And then what do I do? Then I go to two, zero. All right. And the one here would be represented by Z would be represented by one, zero, zero, zero. Okay. So the binary zero, 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 one is the number one. The binary zero, zero, one, zero would be the number, uh, would be, in, you know, in, in, uh, in hexadecimal would be the number two. Okay. So this is how you would count. You would count zero, one, two, <clears throat> three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then what? A, B, C, D, E, F. And then where do you go from there? One, zero, one, one, and then you come down to one F. All right, and then what do you do? Well, two zero, and then down to two F. Well, where are you gonna end up? You're gonna end up over here at F F. Then what do you do? Well, F plus one is zero, carry the one. F plus one is zero, carry the one, and then you end up at the number one zero zero. Okay, does this make sense? Why do we go to hexadecimal? Because then what I can do is I can loop group. Typically, you're, let's talk about 8-bit numbers. 8-bit numbers. I can group the four bits into one character. I can group the next four bits into one character. And therefore, with two characters, I can count from 0 to 255. <coughs> and you say, well, why not just use decimal? Because when you do it this way, you're still in the number system. You're still in the universe of computers and digital devices. Because I can go immediately, like let's go, let's go from F, F, which is 255, right? If I was at 255 in decimal and try to say, okay, what's that in switches on and off? So you, you'd never figure it out, okay? Well, it'd be real hard. You couldn't just do it simply. So if I have F, F, what does that correspond to with switches? Well, this F is 1, 1, 1, 1. This F is 1, 1, 1, 1. And so F, F would be eight switches where all eight switches are on. Okay. Does this make sense? Does it make sense why you use hexadecimal? Okay. So we've talked about data types. <clears throat> well, we can have ints, which are the counting numbers. We can have floats, which are the numbers like 3.14, the, the in-between numbers. It's kind of what we would call the real numbers in math. But now we have a new type of number, and that's a hexadecimal number, a hex number. Typically on Arduino, we specify a hex number with the designator byte, okay? And that byte is eight bits. So we take the eight bits that we have here, and then that is one byte. Okay, the eight bits we lump together in one byte. And so one byte has a first, it has eight bits. It has eight bits. A byte has eight bits. That's eight switches. And you could represent it in binary as zeros and ones, but in hexadecimal, these four will turn into one character, and these four will turn into another character. So a byte has two characters. Like if you if you had F F, that would be one 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 one. If you had one F, it would be zero 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 one 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 one. So it's a number system that will go from meaningful numbers immediately down to what the on-off switches are doing. And so now let's come over and let me tell you a little secret that nobody tells you that's really, really simple. So like if I have the number 32 in decimal, that's very different than the number 32 in hex. Okay, because this two is, is, is a lot different, and this three is a lot different, okay? It's just completely different. This is a much, much bigger number in hex than what it is in decimal. So if I say x is equal to 32, it's going to be really confusing. So the way it usually works is, is that if it's a decimal number, you just write it like that. 
Okay, if it is a byte, if it is a hexadecimal, you tell it that it's a hexadecimal by putting a zero and an X. <coughs> what does that zero and X means? That means, hey, I'm giving you a number and it is going to be in hexadecimal. So if you have 0x32, that just means the hexadecimal number 32. Okay, the hexadecimal number 32. Or the hexadecimal number uh, FF. F. Well, what would that be? Well, this would be 1111. This would be 1111. And if we looked over here in binary, you could see that that would be 255. So let's go back over here to this confusing nonsense that no one ever wants to tell you about. Okay, do you see up there where it says like data array red? Well, that's just an array. It's like a, you know, it's like a variable with more than one number. In it. Don't worry about the array part. Just, just consider that that said red. Well, red has been declared as a type byte or a type hexadecimal. And then the way you tell it that you're giving it a hexadecimal into that hexadecimal variable, you're telling it that it's equal to zero and then x ff. Well, what is that? That's the hexadecimal number ff. What is that? That is the uh, decimal number 255. What is that in binary? Well, it's 1111118 eight ones strung together. Okay, so do you see how all of a sudden when you see nonsense like this, it makes sense that it is simply using bytes to store numbers a byte is x is 8 bits. 8 bits would be two hex characters. And so you have something like f, 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 e, f, 0, 8, 0, 0, 0, uh, e, 0. You see, now you would know how to turn those into real numbers. Now, what's nice about that, a lot of things in the computer world still are in kind of this binary thing, like, right, if we have eight LEDs, you know, that's, that's, you know, like two, two to the third. Okay. So you see a lot of the things that we are going to be doing are in two to a power. And because they're in two to a power, they're most easily done in hexadecimal. And so when you are doing things in the world, you will see a lot of hexadecimal. I hope I am not boring you to death, but let's work a little bit. Let's go back to our Arduino view here. And let's play around a little bit with an Arduino. All right. So I'm going to go to the code view, the most excellent code view, if I can find it here. And uh, let's see. I do need to uh, find my good code. OK, I'm sorry I didn't have this ready. File. Uh, examples, basic, basic, bare minimum. Okay, I'm going to close this, close this. Okay, now I have the bare minimum. I'm sorry I didn't have this done. And now I've just got to get where you can see the serial monitor. So I have to make a slight adjustment. Go get some coffee if you're getting frustrated with me. I am sorry. This will take me just a second to change that to a code view. Changing it to a code view. Uh, try one more time. I know exactly what I'm doing. It's just going to take me a second to get there. Okay, so there you've got that. And now this one, we'll need to configure. Let me try one more time. Okay, this time it will work. Okay. Okay, now you've got now you can see the serial monitor. 
and you can see my coding. Okay, so let's just try something here. Let's define a hexadecimal number as uh, type byte. Okay, byte, and we're going to call it my byte, and then we're going to set it equal to zero. All right, and then let's come down here in the void loop and let's just say my byte is equal to my byte plus one. All right, and then let's come over here. Okay, and then let's say serial dot print ln. Okay. And what I want to print is my byte. And even though it's in hexadecimal, I'm just going to tell it to print it in hex so that there's no confusing. So I'm putting a new parameter in my in my print, and that is print my byte, which is a byte, which is hex, and print it in hex. Okay. And then let's do a delay of dt delay time. And then let's do an int up here. Int of delay time and let's go like this all right ooh m byte i did not put that as a capital so i will put that in byte and then we will run it again okay so let's watch what happens here uh, i didn't put a value in here and so i'm going to put equals uh, 500 and then we will go here again Okay, and uh, I did not turn on the serial monitor. You guys should have been yelling at me. Serial.begin 9600. Okay, so we are going to be counting in hexadecimal here. With a little luck. Okay, three, four, five. Okay, watch this. Seven, eight. This is very important. Watch this. D E F. Boom! And you see it went all the way to F and then 1011 down to 181A. Okay, are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? Okay, and then it goes 1F into 2. All right, do you see that? And then it goes 2F and then it goes to 3. Okay, I hope you guys are doing this so that you can see this counting happen. You can see the magic happening in real time. Okay. Let me get that out of your way a little bit. So we've made a hexadecimal counter, and hopefully you can see what that is. All right, well, you know what we could also do is we could start my byte. Uh, okay, so uh, I put that in as a decimal zero. Okay, I put that in as a decimal zero. What if we wanted to put it in as a hexadecimal zero? That would be zero x. Okay, zero. And now we put it in as hexadecimal. All right, zero x zero. So let's see if that works. Okay, and still it should do the same thing. Okay, so it went to nine and then a b c d e f and then one zero. All right, we could also put it in as a binary. So let's say we could put it is in a binary as binary, and then I get to give it the bits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And there it's still working, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, still counting. All right, what if I started, what if I said m byte is equal to byte zero, 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 zero? one zero 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 now when when I run it what is going to be the first number that it prints hmm well this is worth one two four it's going to start with an eight so let's see if that works okay you see it started with hexadecimal eight well what if I started with zero one one one, the binary zero 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 one 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 one. What's that going to start with? Huh? It's going to start with fifteen, right? And what is fifteen? Fifteen is F. Okay, fifteen is F. Okay, what if I did this? So what is this number? Well, this is 
one, two, four, eight. So this chunk is going to be an eight, and this chunk is going to be an F the first time. I'm going to put 1500 so that we have more time to look at it. Okay, so this is one, this is uh, going to be 8F, right? 8F. Do you see how this works? Is it beginning to make sense? You know what you also can do is you can actually print it out in binary. Instead of printing it out in hexadecimal, you can take it and you can print it out in binary. So let's go back. And let's start with, uh, let's say that this is the number 0, x. And then what do I want to start with? Well, let's start with a, b. Okay, a, b. So what is a going to be and what is b going to be? Okay. Do you understand? Let's look. Okay. A is 1010. Let me turn this off. So the A is 1010. That's 2. That's 10. Okay. And remember the A is 10. Well, what was the B? The B was 11. Right. And this is uh, 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11. Is this making sense? I feel like I'm rambling. But what I want is, okay, let's think what I want. I want you to understand when you see things like this, this is a number. This FF, the 0XFF, that is a hexadecimal number. That hexadecimal number can very easily go to and from binary, and therefore you can carry along a lot of functions. So if I was going to want to write eight LEDs, a given number, would that be, you know, ons and offs? Would that be easier to do in decimal? Or would that be easier to do in binary? Well, it would be easier in binary. Because if we look back at this example that we were just on, if we look at this example that we were just on, 1010, that would be on, off, on, off. And that would simply be an A. And then this would be on, off, on, on. And so I could get the LEDs the way I wanted to, and I could configure them. For this case, for this case, I would simply just uh, go in, and I would keep track of the number AB. A is 1010, and B is 1011. So you see, if we're working with things like LEDs that we're turning on and off, or we're working with different things that are lined up that can be on or off. It's easiest to keep track of them in binary and then to group that binary together into hexadecimal. All right, guys, I hope this makes sense. Let's see if there's any other things that I could do here. We're counting and then we're printing in different uh, in different formats going back and forth from uh, I know what let's let's do this. So I'll do a serial print okay in binary. And then I will do a ser serial. I hope you guys have been able to see this. Let's see. Where was I earlier? Okay. I will. Uh, what I did was I did a serial print my byte bin. And now I'm going to do serial print ln. Or I'll do a serial print. Put some space in there. Okay. And then do a serial dot print uh, my byte. Let me start with, let me do this. I'm going to start printing out. I'm going to convert it to decimal, which you know what that is. And then I'm going to do my byte comma binary like that. And then for the sake of expediency, I will take these two. And then I will print this one out in hex. So I'm going to print the same number out, which fundamentally is hex. But I'm going to print it in a decimal view. I'm going to print the hex in a binary view. And then I'm going to print the hex in a hex view. All right. Let's see how this looks. So in, let's see. We're just going to start with 0, 0. OK. We're going to start with 0, 0 like that. And this was an error. Those should be all uppercase like that. Okay. Does that make sense? 
So now we're going to start counting at the hexadecimal number, right? 0x hexadecimal, 0, 0. Now let's go. And now watch the serial monitor. Okay, 0 is 0 is 0. And I didn't do a print line on the last one, I'm sorry, to go to the next line. Okay, zero, zero, zero. A one is a one is a one. Okay, now we have two in binary is one, zero, and in hex is still two. So we're counting in binary, and so far digital and hexadecimal are the same because we haven't rolled over. Oops, decimal rolled over, and hex is still going with characters. Okay, hex is still going with characters. Now at 15, then the hex, the hex rolls over, because you got to 1, 1, 1, 1, the hex rolls over to F, and then that goes uh, rolls over to 1, 0. All right. Guys, I hope you will play around with this, with this just this simple counter. I really felt feel like I've kind of stumbled through this lesson, but what I've got to have you know is all the computer has is on-off switches. Those on-off switches to get numbers, you can think in terms of on is 1 and off is 0. Now I've got numbers, colors, music, whatever. And then as I'm trying to work in the world of computers with switches, I just can't keep track of zeros and ones out that complicated. So it's easier to program and it's easier to operate if you have to operate with those switches without a nice operating system between you and the switches. It's easiest to interact with them by going from binary to hexadecimal. And I hope that you do this little thing and then you kind of get familiar with the uh, <coughs> you get familiar with the the hexadecimal. And you'll just kind of play around with these uh, with these commands here. The key is is that if you're going to play with these that you want to declare your variable as a byte and then once it's a byte you can represent it as a uh, you can represent it as a uh, hexadecimal number by the leading character 0x or you can represent it as a binary with 0b or you can represent it as a binary with big B like that. And so that's just different ways to put the number in. You can put it in as binary or you can put it in as hexadecimal. Or if you want to put it in as decimal, you can just put it as a 10. Now this will start counting at 10, which would be the my byte of uh, A. So this should start with A if I did this right, if I'm thinking about it right. Okay. So that's 10, which is 1010, 0, 0, which is A. Okay, let's do a different one. Let's put it in as a binary, a binary, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now where's it going to start? Where's it going to start counting? Tell me, okay? It's going to start counting at 15. Okay, 15, 1, 1, 1, 1, which is an F. Or what if I started at a 1, 5, or a 1, 5? You tell me where that's going to start. Well, you can't do a binary 1, 5, right? You would have to do a hex 1, 5. That's not the number 15. That is the hexadecimal number 1, 5. And the hexadecimal number 1, 5 is 5 plus 16, which is 21. Okay, this is worth 16. This is worth 5, so it starts at 21. And then that is your binary number, 10101. And then your hexadecimal number is 1, 5. Okay, <coughs> guys, leave me a comment down below. Did I just completely annoy you with this? It's just... Again, I feel like I've been rambling, but the thing is just nowhere does it really explain these things. And as I start trying to do more advanced projects, what I just keep running into is I keep running into nonsense like this, and it makes no sense. Well, now hopefully it makes sense that if you have 0xff, that's just saying that you're using a hexadecimal number. 0x is hexadecimal, and then ff is, you know, the number 1111. One one eight ones together, and then you could easily convert that to decimal, which is the number 255. 
Okay, leave your comments down below. I'm trying to think of a <coughs> good uh, homework assignment for you. I think uh, my homework assignment for you is to just build more of these counters. Try doing some addition and subtraction, like you know, how would you do? Uh, how would you do uh, in hexadecimal eight zero plus c zero? See if you can do some addition. And just remember, the way to look at it is nine plus one is not ten. Nine plus one is zero. Carry the one. Okay. 1f plus 1 is f plus 1 is 0, carry the 1, it's 2, 0. 1 plus 1 in binary is 0, carry the 1. So play around with some of the math and see if you can get this to work. All right, apologize if I rambled too much on this, and I apologize if I confused you, but let's have a little bit of a dialogue on this. Does it make sense? Do you understand what hexadecimal is? Do you understand why we are using it? All right. Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.